Hi everyone, this video will give you a brief overview of antipsychotics. Before I start with the antipsychotics, I would like to talk about the key pathways that will be very useful for you to be aware of with this topic, and they are the mesolimbic, mesocortical, nigrostriatal, and tuberine fibular pathways. The mesolimbic pathway arises from the ventrotegmental area and is associated with reward and is activated by drug abuse and is overactive in psychosis. It is the one responsible for positive symptoms such as hallucinations in patients who suffer from psychosis. The mesocortical pathway also arises from the ventrotegmental area and it is required for executive function and control of emotions. And the important aspect here is that if um, the dopamine receptors are blocked in this pathway, there is an increase in negative symptoms in patients with psychosis. Um, and the nigrostriatal pathway uses dopamine to help initiate movement, meaning that if the dopamine receptors are blocked, you get trouble initiating movement and Parkinsonism. Tuberin funicular pathway links hypothalamus to the pituitary and the dopamine in this pathway inhibits prolactin from being released in the pituitary. So again, by blocking dopamine, you have increased prolactin, which can cause hyperprolactinemia. Now that I have introduced these key pathways, you will then see how antipsychotics can affect these pathways um, and therefore cause negative side effects. So starting with first generation antipsychotics, some background information, they are also called the typical antipsychotics and they are more prone to causing extra pyramidal symptoms. Examples of them include haloperidol, chlorpromazine and flufenazine. In terms of their mechanism of action, they are D2 receptor antagonists and they act on the mesolimbic and mesocortical pathways. And their overall effect is that they reduce positive symptoms, but also reduce the ability to feel any pleasure by blocking the uh, mesolimbic pathway, um, and they also increase negative symptoms by blocking the mesocortical pathway. In terms of the important side effects to be aware of, the histaminergic side effects include weight gain and sedation, and the alpha-2 side effects include hypertension and priapism. The muscarinic side effects are dry mouth, and as you can see, the mnemonic to remember for first generation antipsychotics is that I, they are anti HAM, H A M, antihistaminergic, anti alpha 2, and anti muscarinic. They can also cause extra pyramidal symptoms, and there is a video on that on my channel, but those include acute dystonia, Parkinsonism, akathisia, neuroleptic malignancy syndrome, and tardive dyskinesia. Drug-specific side effects to be aware of are haroperidol can cause QT prolongation and chlorpromazine can cause extreme photosensitivity. Now, the second generation antipsychotics, they are also called atypical antipsychotics and they are less likely to cause extrapyramidal side effects due to their mechanism of function. They are now often used as the first line in management of psychosis and their examples include clozapine, quetiapine, aripiprazole. In terms of the mechanism of function, they block the serotonin receptors, specifically the 5-HTA2, and have a much lower risk of precipitating extrapyramidal symptoms. They do block dopamine receptors but they mainly block the D4 receptors, not the D2 receptors, um, which means they're way less likely to then precipitate extra pyramidal symptoms. In terms of the side effects, they can increase uh, the risk of venous thromboembolism and stroke in the elderly. And very key is that second generation antipsychotics can cause metabolic syndrome, which includes weight gain, diabetes, and increased blood cholesterol levels. The drug-specific side effects to be aware of is clozapine can most importantly cause agranulocytosis, which makes the patient very, very prone to infection. However, it can also cause myocarditis and it reduces the seizure threshold, so it is not recommended in patients who are known to have epilepsy. 
Risperidone can cause hyperprolactinemia. And importantly, aripiprazole has the least side effects out of the second generation antipsychotics and is therefore often used first in treatment of patients. Now, it is also important to know that clozapine doses, if they are missed for more than 48 hours, the patient has to restart titration slowly from the beginning. They cannot simply go back to the current dose they are on. This was a very brief overview of antipsychotics. I hope it helped you understand the topic. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them down in the comments. Other than that, thank you so much for watching.